Hey, what's going on guys? This is Tyler, pharmacist with Pharmacy Update. Today I wanted to discuss a medication that was just recently approved by the FDA to help with peanut allergies, and that is Palforzia. This is the first drug ever to be approved by the FDA for peanut allergies, and actually any food allergy, so it is exciting to see some new innovative treatments coming out for this issue. Today I'm just going to be covering some general information on Palforzia, nothing too in-depth, um, I'm going to talk about side effects, warnings, and also how much this drug could cost you if you were to try it out. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off here, just a little bit about peanut allergies and why this drug is an important development. It is estimated that over 1.6 million children and teens have a peanut allergy, and that is just in the United States alone. So you can imagine around the world, we're talking about millions and millions of people that have this allergy. This can be a very serious issue for these people. Around one in five people with a peanut allergy will visit an emergency room each year due to complications of an accidental exposure. And the reaction has quite a range of effects, ranging from mild symptoms such as rash or itchiness to anaphylaxis, which can make your throat swell up and hard to breathe. And this is a life-threatening emergency that requires immediate medical attention. Due to all these factors, peanut allergy has really become a serious public health concern. Now comes Palforzia, the first drug of its kind. On January 31st of 2020, the FDA approved Palforzia for the mitigation of allergic reactions due to peanut exposure. The drug is approved for patients aged 4 to 17 years old. And if you do start the medication, it can be continued after you turn 18. And this drug is to be used in conjunction with a peanut avoidant diet. So don't think that you can just start eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches after taking this drug. Palforzia will not cure your peanut allergy, but if you do happen to be exposed to a peanut, your reaction will not be as bad. So it might give these patients more peace of mind, knowing that their reaction might not be a life-threatening thing anymore. And the way it works, there is actually a very small amount of peanut in the drug. You start off by taking the smallest dose, I believe it's 1 600th of a peanut. Then you work your way up and start taking a higher and higher dose. This is the way it decreases the allergic response, by slowly introducing the allergen to your body. Now this is not a new novel approach, honestly. They do this with antibiotics sometimes, and they've even had studies done in the past using just peanuts but this is the first FDA approved treatment. And as far as the way it is provided, it's a powder that you'll sprinkle over cold or room temperature food and eat, uh, such as pudding or applesauce. Next, I wanna go over the warnings and precautions regarding Palforzia. By far the biggest risk you take of starting therapy with this drug is the risk of anaphylaxis. And this can occur really at any point during therapy but the risk is highest during dose escalation and updosing. And I was quite surprised by the amount of people who experienced this in trials. Over 9% of patients did have anaphylaxis in the treatment group during a dose escalation or updosing. This was compared with 3.8% of people in the placebo group who had an anaphylactic reaction, which really doesn't make a lot of sense to me, honestly. How did a placebo cause anaphylaxis? Uh, but anyway, because of this, patients should always have injectable epinephrine or an EpiPen on hand at all times just in case this would happen. And you should be trained and know how to use it because you don't want to be fumbling around with directions while having anaphylaxis. It can be a very chaotic situation and you'll want to know what you're doing. Another thing you will have to do if you start treatment with Palforzia is be monitored for at least an hour after each dose escalation and updosing. Again, this is because of the anaphylaxis risk. So this is not something that you'll just go to the pharmacy and pick up and take home. You'll have to be in some sort of healthcare facility while taking this, at least for the dose increases. Also, anyone with uncontrolled asthma should not take Palforzia, at least until you get it under control. This also goes along with the anaphylaxis warning. If you have uncontrolled asthma and this happens to you, it does increase your risk of death. So just make sure you have any breathing problems under control. And there is also the risk of gastrointestinal allergic symptoms. If these do occur, you may need to adjust your dose or discontinue palforzia. Now I quickly just want to go over the side effects that were experienced in the trials. And these all seem to be the worst during the updosing. And I didn't include every single one here. 
Um, abdominal pain was experienced by quite a few people, with over 67% of people having this during the updosing. And all of these side effects listed here were quite common, with over 20% of the treatment group experiencing them during updosing. So nausea and vomiting, oral pruritus, which is another word for itchiness, um, oral paresthesia or numbing, burning sensation, throat irritation was also quite common, cough, and also skin pruritus, and also uticaria or hives. And I also mentioned anaphylaxis, which occurred in around 9% of patients in the treatment group. So just another thing to think about before trying palforzia, you may experience some of these side effects. And that brings me to my last topic of the day. How much could this potentially cost you? The company bringing this drug to the market is Amune Therapeutics. And according to reports that I have read, the drug is scheduled to cost around $890 per month. And that adds up to around $11,000 per year. So, you know, not the most expensive drug that I have seen, but it is still pretty pricey. And that doesn't include the bill for the doctor's visit. It really comes down to the insurance companies if they want to cover this medication or not. I know there are some people out there that could afford that, um, but I'd say the average person doesn't have an extra $890 a month to pay for this medication. So the insurance companies will have to step in and decide if they're willing to pay for this. And if you are interested when the drug becomes available, always do your research and look into savings programs from the drug company. I know many times new brand name drugs will have a coupon or something along those lines, so be on the lookout for that. Well that's all I have for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video or found it helpful, please leave a like. Also if you'd like to keep up with the latest pharmacy and medical updates, please subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you guys again and have a great day.